Around the era that cognitive science was born, there was a lot of debate in, in the United States as Eastern traditions found their way in as to whether the self was fundamental or not, whether we could deconstruct the self, um, whether the self could even disappear, which was sort of an aspiration within at least the folk psychology of many Eastern traditions. And I wondered whether most of what you have talked about seems to be about what aspects of the self seem to be malleable. But I wondered whether there's any of your research that reflects upon this question about whether the self can be dismantled either for a short period of time or in some extended way. Yeah, so um, I have some work with uh, the philosophers Sean Nichols and Jay Garfield where we go to um, uh, Tibet uh, and look at Buddhists. Um, and now in Buddhist, in Buddhism, there is uh, the doctrine of no self, um, where uh, what this tenet says is that uh, the, uh, the, you know, we might think that we have a self that persists over time, but this is just an illusion. There really isn't a, a self uh, in any meaningful sense. Uh, and this is a doctrine in part uh, that's meant to have these positive consequences. So uh, as soon as you let go of this sense of self, uh, you won't be selfish anymore, right? Because there really is no distinction between you and other people. You'll be more generous. Uh, and also, you should be less afraid of death. Uh, because you'll understand that uh, death isn't anything special, the death of the physical body, because uh, the self is you know, being destroyed in its own way continuously over biological life as well, and there's nothing actually all that special about uh, uh, the death of the physical body. Uh, now, so we've run into this research thinking that we were going to find this, uh, and that the Buddhists were going to be so enlightened uh, about these issues, and it turns out uh, we found two things. Uh, first, we found uh, actually the Buddhists are more afraid of death, um, and specifically they're more afraid of um, the destruction of the self. So if you give them like a bunch of different, why are you afraid of death? They are terrified of the idea of their selves being destroyed at death. And so uh, this paradoxical effect, uh, and there's another paradoxical effect where we, uh, we give them a, a generosity task, essentially. Uh, would you give uh, some life-saving medicine to other people? Or how much longer would they need to live uh, in order for you to agree to give over your medicine to them if you were also going to die? Uh, and we find that and this is, we com there are comparison classes with American subjects uh, and also uh, Indian subjects uh, uh, who are Hindu. Um, and we find that the Americans and Indians, I mean, everyone's selfish, right? No one says, oh, I'll just give away my pill. But the, but the Tibetan Buddhists, they, and they're like, no way, I'm not going to, not, in fact, two thirds uh, of, of these, and these are lamas too, they're in, you know, school to be trained uh, to be priests. Uh, the two thirds of them say, there's no amount of time that this other person could live that I would give my medicine over to them. <laughs> Uh, so uh, one possible, I mean, we were, you know, we were sort of blown away by this. One possible explanation, though, is this relentless focusing on, you know, how the self is always being destroyed is actually quite terrifying. Um, and that it just sort of makes people even more, like, reactive and attached to the self. So uh, it's possible, although uh, the jury is still out, it's possible that um, this might not even be a worthy goal to try to destroy this illusion of the self, um, even though it might be, you know, very much an illusion.